So students have just finished their exams in in the main, I believe, apart from maybe a few strange exams that are kicking around. Well, so. yeah, not not the year fives. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, year 11s, have you? Yeah, year 11s, year 13s. 13s, yeah. How do you think they should move forward from this? How should they spend their summer? There's obviously going to be a, a big element of relief. So I think some relaxation, some relaxation and some time off is definitely well deserved. Mm-hmm. There is space for a little bit of work preparing for, you know, the year after, or maybe they're going off to uni if they're year thirteens. Um, yeah, I definitely think if you get a if you're going off to university and you get your pre reading, you should yeah. definitely do that. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> that that that's that will really help you. For the most part, it's probably a good time to sort of re- recharge yeah um because they're probably feeling quite burnt out at this point a change is good is as good as rest so i kind of think use those energies in different ways so you've been sort of studying all year sort of you can you all have a lot of pent-up energy do something go on a holiday where you're using a lot of that excess energy Spend time with friends, that kind of thing. Especially if you're going off to university because a lot, it's kind of a, a time when you might not see your friends anywhere near, well, you won't see your friends anywhere near as much. No. I think that we did that quite a lot. We spent quite a lot of time together during... During, during that summer. During that summer, yeah. Before we yeah, did. I think all of us, all of us did. Then like you do, you do go off to uni and you sort of, I'm so caught up <laughs> meeting new friends in this new place, this new yeah. whole new life. Um, and you probably keep in touch a little bit with some of your school friends. Yeah. But not so much until you sort of get back for Christmas and you're all like, you know, back in your home place. With yeah, everybody else. I went to Coventry a few, a few times. But you didn't go to Birmingham. But I guess I didn't really do that much in Birmingham apart from... I don't think I had like any massive parties. I wasn't really. No, but I'm not. This was, I'm, I'm talking about like the first year. Yeah. Like in between school and. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, second year, third year, you do like, sort of reconnect a bit more and like go to other people's universities and stuff. So yeah, we did that. Yeah, I, I spent most of my first year in a drunken haze. I think. Like, oh, yeah. I can't, can't <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh... <laughs> The first couple of years for me as well. Yeah. I remember turning up to lectures, bleary eyed. Yeah. <laughs> Imagining what they were talking about. And then sometimes falling asleep. Falling asleep yeah. in the lecture. Me too. So you said a change is as good as rest. Define what like explain what you mean by that. Well, I often find that if you intensely go in one direction and you're focusing on something similar all the time then sometimes just you're not doing anything necessarily less exhausting in its own way or or that doesn't tire you out physically but just changing what you're doing gives your mind a break from what you've been sort of stuck into so so how so what would be your balance between doing something different and actually resting well, resting, I don't think you need that much. Like, sure, get back into a healthy routine like with sleep and that kind of thing. Although you probably, a lot of people probably don't. <laughs> they go mm. off and like... Um, sleep till one o'clock, two yeah. o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but you, 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 in reality, you don't need that much sleep. It's you, you get your eight hours, you get your... You, you might have a few lions during summer, but really it's about doing new things. I think that's really what a rest is. It's like taking your mind off what you've been focusing on so mm. much. Interesting. Um, so would that, would that help you to unwind, recharge? It helps me. Or, yeah. It helps me. For instance, even in the job that we do, I do salsa dancing or whatever. And that takes my mind off off this. So it helps me actually de-stress because I'm not focusing on work when I'm doing that. Like you can't. 
You just mm. don't have the mental space. But that's as good as a rest for me because I don't feel like I'm working on that specific thing that, you know, I've used my mental energies on. I'm turning my mind to something else. Mm. Some, this some might case, be part of my problem. Well, yeah, maybe. Like Hobbies are quite quite good. Yeah, so. I seem to have lost mine over the years. Yeah, no. Because we used to play badminton quite a bit. Yeah, I still do training and stuff, like weight training, but not. Yeah, badminton would be, would be one. But most of my actual hobbies involve looking at a screen. Or they did when I had hobbies. <laughs> they involve looking at a screen. So like photography, editing on a screen, <laughs> producing music, looking at a screen, DJing, looking at a screen, producing videos, looking at a screen. So it's like, and my downtime, watching loads of YouTube and stuff, looking at a screen. I mean, uh, a hobby of mine is blogging and that involves looking at a screen. Yeah. At a screen. But it's a different... It's still turning your mind to something else, but I do think, yeah, probably resting your eyes is also um, yeah, non-screen related. It is also important. Yeah, I'm 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 on a screen from like the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed. That's not good. with the exception of <laughs> with the exception of like maybe lunch or going out. Yeah, if I'm not having lunch in the office, if I'm having lunch in the office, it's looking at a screen. <laughs> that's, that's why I don't like watching TV because I just it's just more screen time. Mm. and i've spent so much time on the screen that I want to do something well a lot of a lot of these year 11s year 13s will be probably gaming as well yeah i mean it is again it's a different different form of energy mental energy yeah different form of energy but still screen related yeah um i've stopped i've i mean i was never a massive gamer but i've stopped playing Playing games and stuff. I don't think I've got time. That's the so I don't. I don't really. Again, I'm not a massive gamer. I do. I enjoy enjoy the odd game, but I'm not. yeah, the odd bit of Mario Kart or something. Yeah. I won't be. Uh, I don't play games on my phone either, apart from like a daily Wordle. Uh, I don't even do that. <laughs> I've started to again the last couple of months. It's good for you. I mean. Like it is is directing a different mental energy. It's not, yeah. which which I think is the main thing. It's that that difference in mental energy, not necessarily not using a screen or, I mean, but it's like Roger Federer wouldn't go. Okay, I'm just going to play some tennis for fun. I've, I, he probably does enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, I've got a great idea. I'm going to play tennis with my friends. He probably goes, nah. Okay, <laughs> I'm probably not going to do that. Just directing that energy in a different way sort of mm. helps you to recharge and really just like take your mind refocus, off, yeah. take your mind off like the pressure of something else, some other pursuit. So obviously you'd we spoke about looking at screens and you know doing your own personal hobbies and stuff. What about friends, family? Scrap them. Those, <laughs> those, <laughs> those those people. Yeah, those 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 random people just hang hang around with you all the time. Yeah, just, yeah. No. <laughs> what do we do with them? <laughs> um, well, yeah. I I mean, connecting with them as much as you can before, especially before university. Um, in many in many cases, a lot of people go away for university, and they're not going to see their family as much. They're not going to see their friends as much. Um, around yeah. and about, so is probably a good idea to devote a li at least a little bit of that time to yeah it was tough i remember when because i was the first one to go off to uni like a week or two before everybody else and uh maybe i won't say the name but one of our friends sort of like cried because i was leaving oh yeah i'll tell you off camera i can't imagine that hey it's probably not who you think it is, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, they were like really sad that I was going and it was like an emotional time for all of us like, going our separate ways. I think my dad, when he was around, he, he cried like just before I left. Well, I don't think anyone cried about me. That you know of? Probably not. Probably no one. <laughs> I can't imagine. Like, no, I wasn't I expecting it either. Like, 
they were just like bye I said bye <laughs> and then I'm like, that was it <laughs> I can imagine that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but I called I called them and that kind of thing so to keep in touch yeah so like weekly I didn't do it every day that that's just not me that's too much yeah <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's there's that uh, keeping keeping your uh, sort of relationships, family, friendships, all that stuff, keeping yeah. it going over summer. But what about if you're in year eleven, or what if you're even in year? Because we're talking we're talking a lot about year elevens and thirteens, because they have the biggest change. Yeah, but a lot of this stuff will also apply to year three, four, five, six, well, seven, eight. They've nine. had the most, um, I guess, intensive period of of the school years so because they've been and also 11 plus but theirs comes later okay <laughs> um, yeah theirs will be when the next school year starts yeah <laughs> kind of um, unfortunate but like the like christmas time i think for them is like they need good to, downtime yeah good downtime yeah um but yeah the unless they're doing independent schools in which case they don't have any easter <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah so i do think yeah, they, they they are special years because they they have that they have such an intense period of exams and they've made it that way because they've the way they've changed the exams for A level especially is that they're all finals rather than split across the year, which was I think potentially better mm. like when when it was split up because it gives you a chance to retake if some of those exams don't go as well. So the year one exams you could retake them in like january i remember we we used to yeah i think so yeah um so they've got this intense exam period so so it's important for them to have a bit more downtime than some of the others um and actually for some of the other year groups they they probably it's probably wise for them to do a little bit more work so i think i think we talked about year 10s and how they should actually make sure that they're (laughs) Yeah, they should utilize that time. Yeah, because they've used they they usually have mocks at the end of year ten, which gives some indication of the different areas where they struggle. They should use a bit of that holiday time to give them a little step up for yeah. the uh, yeah. It, you know, so there's some people who do retakes. Um, they end up doing say November retakes, and I actually think <laughs> it's it's actually, it's because it's so close to the previous year. They don't have enough time to prepare for the retakes if they've failed. So if they do fail in um, and they get their results, then they have a very small window in which to prepare for their next set of exams. So if an exam did go really, really badly um, in maths and English, then it might be prudent to advise some students to take a little bit of time during that break to actually go back over mm. um their their maths and their english yeah. just to prepare so that it's not because it's like november it's quite soon after having got the results to get there and it takes a lot to actually pass especially if it's like foundation maths or something like that the the, the mark that you need to get is quite high so in those cases, when you feel like you've had a bad maths and English exam, it could be worth, especially based on your, say, mocks and, and that kind of thing. If you have, you know, got twos and threes in your mocks, then in that case, it might be prudent to actually prepare. So another thing that you can do is explore new projects and hobbies. Mm-hmm. Do you have any, I don't know if you've got any things that you pursue during the holidays specifically uh you mean when i was yeah so year so, 11. yeah or, or yeah just at school generally or when you had a long break i didn't really no i probably helped out with um stuff at home like family the family business and stuff helped out helped out there um but spent a lot of time probably going going out with friends i did i don't I think did. i did the only, the only thing that i did was i but that was more as an adult so during christmas i learned 
Chinese. Like, hmm. But I, I spent like three hours a day, sort of. Sort of Is this studying. when while you were at school? No, this was just as an adult. I was an no. adult. No. Um, I don't know if you've done that. Yeah, as an adult, mine again was just just DJing and doing music. Yeah. yeah. So I yeah I don't think I did anything particularly different during holidays. I just spent a bit more time with friends and yeah went on holidays, which I suppose when that's yeah yeah um, went to new places. That was the main thing. But obviously back then it was kind of up. There's a lot up to your parents when when these whether mm. these holidays holidays would happen. Yeah. Um, but I think. My parents, my mum in particular, was always very, was very adamant that every year we'd, we'd um, go on at least one holiday. Like every single year, mm. we'd go at least somewhere, which I thought was, you know, it meant that I saw a lot of the world. I didn't really do a lot. Didn't really do a lot of that. Yeah, no, we didn't really do family holidays like that. <laughs> we didn't really do family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, well, my my dad my dad wasn't well. He wasn't able to travel, so mm. yeah, we didn't really do that. My mum was working, so I'd either go with cousins and stuff on holiday, or you did have a lot of cousins. You do have quite a few relatives in the UK. Yeah. 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 In my case, I didn't. So we had to sort of go. We had to go abroad to actually see family. Oh no, we just drive to Woodford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you make any effort to increase your skills and experience in or, or volunteer during your summer holidays? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have the same mind now as I. And I didn't have the same mind I have now back then. So I didn't, right. I didn't do any... I mean, I volunteered helping out again with family, family stuff. Uh, so I was kind of working there yeah. for, f for free. But yeah, no, I never, I never did... Never, I never worked for anybody else. So I've never done volunteering. Um, I did do work experience to... HSBC in Canary Wharf because my mum was working there. So I did two weeks work experience there after, after my GCSEs. We had to do that, yeah. Yeah. No, it was during. So during. Know. Maybe it, it was, was during. like, I think we we were year 11, I think. Yeah, I, I think. Worked, I worked in a trade union. I wrote a policy document. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course you did. Um, for maternity leave. And they used it to negotiate with management. Where was this? Um, export credit. Finance, was it? Export credit. They, they used to have ECGD? Something like that, I don't know. I can't remember what it's called. The, they basically government insurance. Right. Yeah. It's called export finance now, I think. Um, but yeah, I... I worked in the trade union office and then did about three months worth of filing in the week. It was it was insane. This guy just had so much filing. I just did all his filing. Yeah, I think pretty much all of my tasks were filing related or like typing documents into a spreadsheet sort of thing. I optimized, a, I think I optimized something that they were doing because I, I was like the way they were doing it didn't make didn't make complete sense and it was something to do with spreadsheets like so i was like oh if they do that that saves a bit of time that sort of stuff yeah i don't remember <laughs> what i was doing i was i i think i should have been employed <laughs> <laughs> did a well good job um but yeah i did that i did i've always done quite a bit of volunteering actually like mm. just just like shops and charity shops and that kind of thing and I worked for my aunt for a bit for in fire safety. 
<laughs> like I'd walk around a warehouse and basically go, this, <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> this is this is a fire hazard. This isn't good. That kind of thing. That's <laughs> <laughs> like fair enough. Yeah, and and just it was it was because it was in Texas. So it was really hot. So we were walking around these massive warehouses. They're absolutely huge, and like it's like miles of walking the and it's texas so yeah yeah <laughs> and just looking at stuff and going no that's probably unsafe like there's there's a lot of paper there that's probably a bad thing and then someone's doing welding here <laughs> <laughs> that's probably a bad bad combination um and also things like um looking at f fire extinguishers and saying whether they're in day or not yeah in day like, sort of stuff or, or have enough pressure yeah. Or whether they've got the right combination of fire. Uh, yeah, CO2, water, all that. Yeah. yeah. So that was a, it's kind of interesting, actually, that, mm. that, that business. Um, but maybe you should, you should probably do that here. What, look, look at the, yeah. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. just double check. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I can. I can still look at them and go, okay, that one's all right. I remember yeah. once I looked in, in one and it had a black widow nest in it. <laughs> not not here <laughs> that's texas, but, but that's texas in, for you in texas yeah yeah like i was like okay okay it's a black widow nest texas is probably the one of the best places i've visited and i wasn't expecting it but which which part houston it's huge oh yeah well i drove from houston to miami so i went along the whole south coast for like a week and a half we're always there um houston because my family is out in el paso like a lot of them i remember you brought back you brought you, you brought us back t-shirts after uh yeah after gcse yeah. you said el paso on them yeah the whole group had them <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i must still have that somewhere i think i mean that that'd be nice if you do. I, I don't think i've got mine so no but it's a gift you can't really throw away can you so you probably won't gifts if they no longer it probably doesn't fit me now so yeah Probably not. Oh. Use it for painting or whatever when we do like <laughs> decorating or whatever. So we're going to talk about like healthy habits and building them, maintaining them, or like getting back to being healthy. I think you had a couple of stats, didn't you, that you were going to talk I think about? The main things about what they, what children aren't eating. So 56% of parents say that their teenager skips breakfast, which I think is qu quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, I was never a massive breakfast eater. It takes me a couple of hours for my immune system and stuff to kick in, so it might depend on each person, but I, I, I can see the point. There was a second one, which was 20, 27% of parents say their child eats junk food instead of proper meals. Yeah. <laughs> which instead Instead of proper meals. Not yeah, as well does. as, like we do it as well as. A lot of that. <laughs> but it's not in place of. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, so let me tell you a story. So I was here a couple of weeks ago with, on a Saturday and one of the year 11s came in and said that she'd basically not slept at all and then went into an exam. Sounds like a great combination. <laughs> yeah. And not eaten properly. Just, yeah. I said how that's really going to affect your performance. So what's your thoughts on... Uh, like maintaining healthy habits and stuff during this during the exam period now that the exams are over uh do you, do you just continue do you try and go back do you what what's your thoughts i don't know I, I think people shouldn't leave i mean people shouldn't really change how they you know their healthy habits they, they shouldn't get less healthy during the exam period does make that's <laughs> that doesn't make sense that kind of makes sense um because staying staying healthy and keeping healthy food and drink and whatever else and sleeping patterns and stuff requires a fair bit of thought and energy to keep going so if you're removing if you're if you're allocating those brain resources to something else like your exams i know it's counterintuitive to like keep that resource sort of going but you're you're not you naturally go all in Oh, it might be. It's, it's counterintuitive, probably. Like, then, 
it seems to make sense that if you go, okay, I, I can have some energy drinks and work five hours on this as opposed to not having an energy drink and work two hours. Um, I don't think that happens in practice, but... No. Because I think there were plenty of people who they could have those healthy habits and not rely on outside stimulus. If anything, it probably... Like, we know... I don't think caffeine's... A little bit of caffeine's good for... I think having a coffee in the morning is actually quite good for exam performance. But not to subsist on it. <laughs> sort of unhealthy things. Yeah. Days. Yeah, it reminds me of, I mean... It reminds me of the in-between us. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's uh, dangerous. Yeah. I, don't, I assume the uh, kids haven't seen, because that was our, our sort of yeah. time frame. No. Um, but yeah, I was literally about to say it reminds me of in-between us. I, I, I don't think... Yeah, I, th I think you should not change your habits that much. Unless they were so unhealthy during the exam period <laughs> that if, yeah, you, if you were to continue that way, you'd probably die. Um, I think it's better to have remain consistent with things like your sleep, sleep patterns, your um, diet, that kind of thing. Mm. It's important to actually eat healthy throughout your life, not just at select periods. Um, but if it has been a problem, it can be and obviously you can devote a bit more time to some other practices so if you if you do get anything out of if you do want to meditate if you do want to do some other things that although that's probably a good thing to do during an exam period yeah it's, yes. it will be difficult if you're really anxious and hopped up on caffeine and energy drinks to sit there and try and meditate yeah again counterintuitive you think you're wasting your time but actually yeah no, probably I, does the opposite i think a lot of things are, are like that so it's a bit like making a <laughs> you know a lot of people say like making a revision plan is like counterproductive but i think having some level of organization and organizing your revision taking a little bit of time to do that even if it's like 10 minutes what am i going to do it's a bit like making a list yeah. As in, in your head, you're like, okay, this is just wasting time because I'm spending time doing this when I should be doing this. But you take it out of your head, which which gives you more brain re resources to use on other stuff. And, and plus, one, it down onto. Plus, you can tick them off. And I, I think at the at the bare minimum, people should be making less on on what they're yeah. doing f for the little uh, exam period. little dopamine hit whenever you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like you feel like you've accomplished something, even if it's a small. And you have. Well, you yeah, have, yeah, but even if it's a small <laughs> thing, you can still yeah. write it down to get off. And and that's an important part of, I think, staying motivated because... It keeps for, you motivated, yeah. Because you're actually, you've completed something. So, well, kudos to you. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned pre-reading yes. for those year 13s that are going to university. Uh, for the other year groups, what would you say in terms of preparing for the next like, academic year say you're i don't know you're year 10 year 11 year four five i think you, much... like if you're taking a subject at a level it might make sense to go over that subject a little bit if you're the type of person who goes into exam and immediately after taking the exam you forget everything that you've done um in that case it might be worth doing a little bit of work during the summer to keep your skills sharp. If someone's taking like maths, for instance, at A-level, you should be well up on your GCSE, end of GCSE stuff. So you're ready to sort of take that on. Yeah, that, that was a big, that was a big jump. With, um, I still think A-level is probably the hardest thing I've ever done academically. For me, more, more than university. I don't think so. Well, for, not me, for me, for me, it was not for, not for me. But I get. I, I think it is difficult in terms of because you've got more than one subject, and it is quite 
quite a bit of material. And and also I think at that time you're you're maturing into a good like you're developing good study habits, but you're still developing them. You're not you're not really that good at it. <laughs> Mm. You 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 you're starting to engage in self-directed learning, but you haven't really mastered it fully. Um, GCSEs is obviously a, a lot of it so directed by the school and mm. uh, and the teacher and that kind of thing, like facilitated in that way. You still need to go away and study stuff, but then at A level, so much of it is on you to take time to learn these things. So I, sometimes I just like threw a book at me and like learn this I'm like, okay right. um, um i was i was never uh i never knew how to revise yeah i still don't think i fully do and especially that that time of my well that time of my life anyway i wasn't i kind of you'd be the wrong person i lost interest <laughs> you'd yeah. be the wrong person to deliver a study skills session well, yeah i think i'd be better at it now but yeah. It's uh, back then I, I didn't, especially A level, was not in the right mind frame to actually work on that for several different personal reasons. Yeah. Uh, GCSEs, I did a bit of revision, didn't do a lot, still got all like, like A's and B's. Yeah. Um, funnily enough, the A's I got were in the subjects that I got to choose, yeah. which tells you a lot. Yeah, I think you're the type of person if you i think i i just enjoy learning generally so it's a, yeah like uh, in, i do i do now mm. but i didn't then didn't appreciate it then or didn't i wasn't in, i lost interest yeah like i i feel like it didn't particularly matter what i was although i think there was like an un like being underconfident in something feeling that i wasn't good at it or i couldn't be good at it affected my ability to learn it so i remember with french as soon as i had the chance to drop french i dropped french me too because i never thought i i, I just like i just assumed that i couldn't do it it's because it's structured very differently yeah I, i've 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 become better at language learning since because i i understand how i want to learn it and i think with something like a language you need it needs, you need yeah. to, you need to sort of get into into it so to really enjoy it it's the culture and everything behind it yeah and you've got to have that strong interest in order to get the language and then with french i feel i was immediately put off just by the fact that i, I just wasn't very good at it and I yeah went, okay like and i and Same. also a lot of people were very good at it i, I looked at them and i was like i'm I, i'm terrible Compared to these other people who are literally francophiles, like they, they love that, like they can actually speak French and that kind of thing. And also, the way we learned was very, we didn't really do enough conversation practice, I think. And, no, it was and, very and, much and, here's the Encore Tricolor textbook, yeah. <laughs> we're lapis scene over there. And then, that's and then, basically just what you learn it was learning grammatical structures but i feel like now the way that i approach language learning is very different and it's very personalized to how i want to learn it yeah you should um, be immersed in it as well hmm. like i i did spanish i thought i was learning french from like the age of you know four or five yeah uh at like a saturday french school in monstered oh. uh, you're quite a, you're even lucky then, though I'd, yeah. I'd never even done any French until I still couldn't I, I couldn't until, get it when I went to school though until Forest like I'd, I, I I swapped it out for um for Spanish and that I just picked up maybe, I got I got I managed to get an A in Spanish why why was it was it I could do the just, talking I could do the I think it, it's just it's the sentences are structured in a way that in you a way like. that makes more sense there's no like going <clears throat> going like through the sentence to realize that this verb was talking about this oh okay and having a question mark at the beginning of a sentence makes so much sense i think we should do that in english because you don't realize it's a question until you get to the end well, my dad hates that it's, really it's quite clever they put a question mark up, upside down i yeah, can't remember yeah. at the beginning so when mm -hmm. you're starting that sentence you know it's a question mark 
Yeah. But the... And sorry, when I went, talking about being immersed in it, when I went to Cuba, all came back. Oh, right. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can speak this, I can speak that, I can ask for a coffee with milk without sugar, with, in Spanish. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but they, they, they kind of laughed because their dialect is different. Yeah. So, you know, in European Spain, they pronounce their, what was it? Like, like a beer is a cerveza, like yeah. a th. Cerveza, yeah. Or like the V's become B's. Yeah. In Cuba, they don't do that. So when I, when I started speaking in European and Spanish, they were like, we don't talk like that over here. <laughs> Why are you talking with a lisp? Like, it's, but, but it's, I think, it should be V, not the, whatever it is. But I think that's not a bad thing. Like, it's, I think it's fine to have a regional I oh, know they were. They Spanish. were. They, oh, yeah. The thing is, they were happy f just to have conversations with me in Spanish. Yeah. Whereas if you go to France, try talking in French, and they realize you speak English. They'll just talk. They're kind of like, yeah, we'll just talk to you in English, even though you're trying. It's like we both know English better than we both know French, so yeah, we'll just do that. And also with Spanish, it's just so widely spoken. It's a and it's, it's another reason why I switched over. There are parts of like especially Latin America, where they, they don't necessarily speak that English to, to that. It's a bit like learning an a, like a Oriental language for me. So Chinese, uh, Korean. I remember <laughs> going out to the countryside in Korea and l some people don't don't speak English um, at all. <laughs> and, and also th things like going to the country and, and reading the bus signs and in korean that, that kind of thing because it's quite it's quite easy to pick up like, yeah you... i mean i hate to bring it back to tech again but like that's all kind of google lens what does that say yeah or like live translation mm. talking to somebody else but there's like a, a level of respect that you get from learning a language like speaking to someone that like, yeah i feel like i can create a closer relationship with oh yeah with I'm, not, I'm not saying you can't yeah but that will happen less and less from now on. I don't think it will, because people people are still like, oh, you've taken the time to. Yeah, but not everybody will think like that. Not everyone will will. I think be as into it as you are. I think people do. Like as in, I like people people are like okay, this person actually took took time to learn this learn this language. I'm going to treat them automatically. Yeah, better. but I'm saying most people won't no. take time to learn the language like like oh, you no, do. Oh no, no, yeah, no, that's true. But that's what I mean. Like it, it will give you an advantage if you actually know the language because yeah. people will be so lazy with it. And they, and also like if if things do get mistranslated, you can sort of you've got a bit more of a yeah sense of it. True. Um, it's easier because of your brain's malleability and plasticity. It's easier to to learn a language before the age of five, eight, something I, like that. With with I think it's with things like native like pronunciation. So but even just learning the language, because like Spanish, extremely difficult to pronounce if you don't, if you if you haven't been speaking that, like if you can't roll your R's, you spend ages trying to learn how to do that. Yeah. Whereas if you'd learn that at like five, you can pick it up quickly. I'm I'm talking more about like the being able to remember, make those brain connections to remember the what the words and you know. I think like rather than just physical being able to say it i think you can do i think you can do that with like if you learn that as an adult but the hard thing is actually getting that native like dialect dialect um i think that's the real limit with it's, it's something that you always have that little bit of like if i speak chinese it's like you can still tell that he's learned chinese as an adult yeah, yeah i see what you mean um or, or older but then a, a kid growing up so a great thing for any student to do is actually learn a language i think that's that's actually really good yeah. use of use of the summer but you could even go away to like if you're going on a holiday somewhere learn a bit of that language like you can sort of make it practical as well yeah i mean we've, we've drifted off there. Yeah. <laughs> but the original question was sort of 
academic year, preparing for the next academic year. Yeah. So that's kind of if you're like year 11, year 31, like just to quickly round it off. Say you're year seven. Uh, year sevens. Uh, if you don't have your basic skills down. Then work on that. Then work on them. Um, Otherwise take more time off. Use the use the academic, use the end of year exams. For the gauge. Is it, yeah so so you'll have certain things in your report in your in 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 your end of year exam that come up as particular weaknesses work on those a little bit because you also have holiday homework but like it's usually not a huge amount i mean yeah i, I would say quite if, a lot, but like, i would say if you're yeah basic skills fair enough but if you're like year Three, four, five, and not doing eleven plus six, seven, eight, nine, nine, yeah, ten as well. Ten and a bit. I would say do Something. maybe eighty twenty Pareto principle. Do like twenty percent work, eighty percent play. Do, you know, do some reading, like hang out with friends. The most everything we've spoken about before. The year twelves as well. Year twelve too, yeah, definitely because. Jumping that from a, that a that first year of A level, a lot of people don't go back to it, and that tends to be where they they have a lot of problems in because they they go okay they've done their especially in something like history. So maths all builds on itself quite a lot because it, it's like okay if I can do that then I can do that, and then you have all the more difficult stuff at the end in your second year. So really, you will be able to do all of this if you can do this core stuff generally yeah although there are some so maybe 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 things. year 12 you'd do more of a 50 50 but if you're doing something like history and you're doing one module one year you'll forget it like I, yeah like so what i'm saying so like yeah so to, to round it off if you're year three four five not doing 11 plus six seven eight nine maybe ten like 20 percent work 80 percent take some time off do some reading in that 20 percent brush up on stuff you've forgotten about this is provided that your basic knowledge is your like foundational knowledge is there yeah and then yeah if you're 11 year 11 year 13 kind of year 12 all the other stuff that we spoke about yeah so thanks for joining us again this month if you're watching us on youtube don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if you're listening to us on apple or spotify don't forget to give us a follow and a rating and we'll see you back again here next month the education lounge podcast